Hello. So in the third part of this uh, environmental uh, cost-benefit analysis, uh, I will discuss more in detail the role of time horizon and also the choice of the discount rate. So as we remember from the previous lesson, the cost-benefit analysis essentially is a, is a net present value test that is the net present value of the project, uh, positive or negative. So to calculate the net present value, of course, the discount rate and time horizon are very, very important. So I took this table to illustrate that how big impact the discount rate and the time horizon can make. Uh, make uh, and uh, this is from an article by, by O'Mahony in 2021. So um, what does this table, table compare? Like suppose that there is just a, a constant uh, long-term flow of uh, 1,000 US dollars per year. So every year, this, uh, this, uh, this kind of project would pay 1,000 euros. So it could be, could be a benefit flow or cost flow. It, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Or we, we could think about that, okay, it would be net benefit of $1,000 per, per year. So maybe it is illustrative to start from the rightmost column where the discount rate is zero. So obviously, if the, if the time horizon is 25 years, then, then without any discounting, then in 25 years, this kind of $1,000 per year would yield them $25,000 in total. So this is especially relevant if we talk about this kind of long-term benefits, like uh, like I started as an example with this uh, railroad project. So suppose that uh, every year there would be benefits of, of $1,000. $1, so if the time horizon is uh, doubled from 25 years to 50 years, then obviously also the benefits are doubled from 25 to 50,000 years if the discount rate is zero. And then if you double it further to 100 years, then also, also, also benefits double in the zero discount rate case. And in the same way, 120 years, if it is, then it's $120,000. So then, then this, uh, this exercise also illustrates, okay, what if we take some kind of small discount rate of 1.4%, or and gradually increase the discount rate to three, five, or seven. So we're moving to the left towards in this in this table. We see that of course this uh, this kind of uh, discounted value of this kind of uh, cash flow becomes smaller and smaller the higher the discount rate is. Uh, and interestingly, when we put the seven percent discount rate, then then in some sense the time horizon start to lose a little bit its meaning. So for example. Uh, the difference between 50 years or 100 years or even 120 years uh, becomes already almost negligible when, when the discount rate is as high as 7%. So this, this illustrates that uh, how big impact on the net present value it has if, if you have a very high discount rate and also the, the time horizon matters because... Uh, uh, especially in this kind of really long-term projects like, like the railroad, railroad projects that I um, used as an illustrative example previously, then of course the, the time horizon can be potentially very, very long. Even, even 120 years might be, might be a relatively short time span for, for a, a railway investment. So this, this illustrates the, the impact that the, both time horizon and the the discount rate make make on the on the project. The following figure it, it's it's just the same example, but now in graphical terms. So here we have these uh, four lines representing alternative uh, discount rates, and then on the on the horizontal axis we have uh, have years. So this indicates the time horizon. So the topmost uh, line is this. Uh, with the smallest discount rate of 1.4, the thickest solid line is the in, indicates the 3% discount rate, and the lowest one is when we use the 7% discount rate. So notice how this curves become very flat. So if we have a 3% discount rate, then already like after 50 years or so, then any anything that happens after after 50 years 
will probably not matter or, or, or almost nothing it becomes completely marginal when we when we have this five uh, percent uh, it is this dashed line this kind of um, a second from the bottom then somewhere around 85 or 90 years then then there's like no impact whatsoever and and the same of course if we have three percent discount rate also but notice that when we have 1.4 percent then it still continues to capture these uh, impacts uh, after after 100 years also so because this uh, this kind of uh, choice of the discount rate it can really make a huge difference in the net present value and hence also the, the fact that we we'll, would uh, would the project be implemented or not then obviously for the for the policymakers they should have some kind of guidelines that what kind of discount rate should be used and and the discount rate shouldn't just uh, change from one project to another so here is this uh, this box is from the permanent all textbook uh, which uh, which gives some kind of like uh, at least at the time of, of writing the book that uh, that um, that uh, how the discount rates have been used in practice uh, so in the past uh, there has been quite uh, quite um, uh, little standards of what kind of discount rates would be used so according to the textbook then in 1969 uh, the United States Congressional hearing found that uh, that the public agencies were using discount rates varying from zero to 20 percent and with no clear logic uh, dictating the level in any particular in instance. So as a result then then in many countries there are, there are nowadays some guidelines that uh, that what kind of discount rates would be should be used in this kind of um, uh, by, by public agencies. Uh, so, and then in this box, there's also some some uh, values indicated for the UK. So, uh, so it was uh, uh, in uh, 1988, the UK Treasury uh, used the sort of so-called test discount rate of five percent. So, test refers to this net present value test. Uh, uh, then it increased to six percent. That was already about eight uh, percent. So, if we compare to this O'Mahony's uh, case then uh, then where this uh, O'Mahony com considered seven percent discount rate in this uh, big figure so notice that when the discount rate is so high as six or eight percent uh, then anything that occurs after 50 years of the of the of the project will be like uh, having having a, a very very marginal impact if any so obviously the the interest rates were also very high in the in the late 80s early early 90s so in this this table is again from this O'Mahony's article reviewing some of the discount rate guidance in 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 selected OECD countries so so here's also some some uh, countries from the continental Europe uh, and notice that more recently so this refers to the OECD publication from 2018 so, so more recently, the discount rates have been smaller in the short to medium term. So, so the middle column refers to short to medium term, and and there are values like three point five in the in the UK, uh, two percent in the U USA, two point five in France, Norway, Netherlands, three percent. Uh, so, so these are already like much more moderate, and uh, obviously, it also matters that. Uh, uh, interest rates after the after the financial crisis and the resulting greater recession have been very very low or close to zero. And an interesting finding also in this in these uh, more recent guidelines is that in many countries then the the there's two there's separate interest rate for the short term, and then then notice that the, in the long term then then for example in the UK this interest rate decreases to one percent after 300 years um in france uh, then then uh, the risk rate declines to 1.5 percent uh, uh, for 75 year horizon and then uh, in norway for example after 100 years then there is uh, there is one percent so i interpret that in norway they apply three uh, percent uh, 3% uh, discount rate up to 100 years and then after 100 years 
lower 1% discount rate. So, and then in the Netherlands, the discount rate is more smoothly, uh, smoothly declining. So with this kind of uh, application of lower discount rate for this very, very if uh, impacts that occur very far in the future, whether they are cost or benefits, but typically benefits, then also this kind of more long term benefits can be can be uh, taken into account in a, in a, in a cost benefit assessment. So, in summary, I believe this these uh, previous slides indicate that. Uh, that uh, there is not some kind of uh, uh, golden standard for the for the discount rate, but still even even nowadays the discount rates vary uh, across countries and also to some extent uh, even within the same country. But but anyway, currently these the discount rates used are somewhat uh, smaller than they used to be in the past, and I believe that the reason is also that the interest rates are uh, have been very very low. It's interesting to see that now more recently the, the uh, central banks have in increased their, their, their interest rates so and also the market interest rates have increased. So will, will it also show up as increase in the discount rate in this kind of cost benefit assessments? Although it's it's somewhat a different issue, but, but still it seems that this kind of uh, uh, market interest rates influence that what kind of... Uh, what kind of discount rates seems appropriate even in this kind of uh, kind of long term projects and also it seems that it's more common to then apply smaller interest rates for effects that occur very far in the future so then in the next lesson we go to the environmental valuation and this of course is also something that we it's a necessary step in the in the cost benefit analysis but i think also this kind of uh, this uh, discussion in this uh, this uh, theme 8 also then motivates that why the valuation of the environment is also critically important thank you for your attention see you next time bye